Happy Tuesday, everybody. It is Christopher Barikmo here again, instructional coach at Shawnee Mission East High School, wanting to talk a little bit today with you uh, about search engines and using the internet and the World Wide Web as, a, uh, as an instructional resource uh, and give us some tips and strategies, uh, but mostly tools uh, in terms of how we can best navigate and how we can best help students navigate all of that information that's out on the web. We've got uh, a lot of different examples of search engines uh, that are so much more than just a plain old Google search. Uh, and so we're going to dive right in and explore some of those pieces uh, and explore some of those search engines a little bit more particularly as we kind of work through the weeds of the internet uh, and we help our students work through the weeds of the internet uh, to find the good information and the good resources they can use in class. Let's begin. What we want to do today uh, in this time together is explore these different search engines that uh, can be tools to make students' online research more fruitful and appropriate and helpful. Uh, it's much more than just a Google search, uh, and it's not just tips and tricks on how to use site colon .edu, site colon edu in your search terms. It's actually going to search engines that are much more uh, appropriate for school and academic use. Uh, want to also help students discover that the academic world of reading, writing, and publishing research is accessible. And the, the learning that is contained in there is accessible for our students. Uh, and uh, the more we can encourage them to use the resources that are out there uh, that are academically appropriate, the better products we're going to get in class uh, with our students. And then also Finally, I just want to challenge your understanding that the internet and the web is a chasm that we should avoid in the classroom. There's so much, there's so much bad stuff out there, so we should just avoid it. That, that is the furthest thing from the truth. And we are in an age where, frankly, our content knowledge as teachers is already outdated. Uh, and students can find that information and call us on that because of the power of the internet and the power of uh, of the collection of ideas in the digital space. So we have to help students navigate that and we also have to help our colleagues and our own professional learning rise to the occasion uh, and embrace that chasm uh, as an opportunity uh, and a mountain to climb uh, that we can use in our classroom. The one of the ways we can actually look at some of that information uh, and strategies and lessons uh, is an extensive um, set of lessons that's put together by the Global Digital Citizen Foundation, uh, which gives strategies for searching, uh, lesson plans to use in classrooms if you're in you know, an information unit, an information research unit. Uh, these are really great resources to use uh, throughout that process and there's any number of levels beginner intermediate advanced uh, different topics so i really encourage you to go to the global digital global digital citizen foundation website um, that i sent in our staff email uh, announcing this session uh, but also just on the web their strategies and lesson plans that they've put together are wonderful wonderful tools so i, I hope you take advantage of those particular tools so uh, I'm going to briefly go through some of the different uh, search engines that we have available uh, and that are out there on the web. And you know we know the Google Books and Google Scholar and Google as a source is, is, is a, a resource is a wonderful piece for our classrooms. But there's a lot of other really good pieces as well. And so we're going to explore Microsoft Academic, Worldwide Science, Science.gov, Wolfram Alpha, RefSeq, Eric, Virtual Learning Resources Centers, Base, Infotopia, PubMed Central, LexisWeb, all kinds of different sources. Uh, and just to give you a, a, a quick shot of what is this source and how can I use it in research in my class. So let's dive right in and we're going to start with the simple and easy suite from Google, Google Scholar and Google Books, and we'll make our way around the cycle. So buckle up, we've got some exploring and researching to do. You can see here we are back at a comfortable place, uh, Google. Uh, obviously, Google.com is one of the most comfortable sources uh, of um, research uh, for our students. Unfortunately, 
it of course is not the best. Uh, people pay to get their ads on there. People pay to get their uh, search um, products up at the top of people's search results. Uh, and so to help students navigate through that is, is really our job. Uh, one of the ways that I always help my students start on this process is by using Google Scholar. Uh, and you know you can look in here and you can see the, the search will include articles or you can go and only search case law. You can look at particular courts. You know, so if we're looking at federal courts and I want to search for U.S. versus Lopez, it's going to give me that information and I can go right to the source. Uh, and I'm going to do some reading. That's what students do. They need to read and they need to learn and they need to go through this stuff for themselves. But uh, if we're looking at, you know, articles, we can do a search on something we're familiar with, formative assessment, and so then that's going to look at all of the different places in a title or in an abstract or in an, uh, a search field where the phrase formative assessment comes up. So uh, we've got a lot of, uh, of good information uh, that, you know, we can look at um, formative assessment and self-regulated learning uh, and it's going to take us to the studies in higher education journal uh, we can read a little bit about that if we want the full text of that we can then go to um, our library website or universities that we're associated with websites uh, to try and get that full text information uh, sometimes we are lucky enough uh, on Google Scholar that it is going to be there for us already, but it allows us to then really do the work of academic research and academic searching, uh, which from day one when they walk into a high school really needs to be the focus. Uh, for too long we've, we've allowed the, you know, the, the popular search engines to happen, so we can really make a, a shift over to uh, Google Scholar and, and using more appropriate search engines um, that will continue showing. Uh, there is also Google Books, uh, and this is going to search the full text of books. So if we're looking for, um, well, let's find, uh, well, let's do another search term on formative assessment. And it's going to look at books and books that we have access to on Google uh, that are looking at formative assessment. Uh, and so if we look at embedded formative assessment, uh, this is, um, you know, 48 occurrences from this uh, Dylan William book uh, from Solution Tree Press on uh, formative assessment. And so we can go right to what exactly is formative assessment, and we can get that book uh, and get that content uh, in there uh, and read it. So again, it's going to, to the source. We obviously have to help students understand what is a good source and what is not a good source. What kind of information can we do? You know, if we click on Robert Marzano, who we as educators know is a wonderful, wonderful resource, we can see what else has he published. You know, on Google Books, it allows us to do some of that work. What has Dylan William also published, or where has he been used or mentioned? Uh, and so we can get them some practice on the academic search uh, that these web tools offer. So uh, Google Books, uh, books.google.com uh, is a great search as well, uh, a great tool for us to use in the classroom to search. Uh, Microsoft also has a really, really amazing academic search site called uh, Microsoft Academic. Uh, and it's the same kind of search query if we go to, let's say we're having our students do a search on mitochondria. Uh, and uh, it's going to look at where is mitochondria mentioned in the academic literature. We can search by affiliation, we can search by field of study, we can uh, you know, just search by particular journals, but if we're asking students to learn about mitochondria as an organelle in the cell, then we're going to turn them maybe to some, you know, what, what is out there in the academic world. And you know, we're going to let them discover and explore that uh, in this Microsoft Academic. I do want to point out that uh, this is their second iteration of it. Uh, you can uh, create accounts and profiles. So you can personalize that. Uh, there are um, uh, some differences with Microsoft Academic uh, 
because it's not a keyword uh, search, it's a semantic search engine, uh, and it allows you to you know, look at a field of research in general and not just search for the papers that list this information. Um, and so there's some different tips and tricks in here on, uh, on what have they changed in version 2.0, but Microsoft Academic is a really great tool for us to use. Um, I also like to use WorldwideScience.org. Uh, if we are searching, uh, we can search obviously in different languages, uh, but uh, my, uh, WorldwideScience.org uh, is a website that brings together uh, a number of different databases and search engines uh, from all kinds of different international um, organizations. It is from within the U.S. Department of Energy uh, and the Office of Science, uh, and so it is, is trying to offer uh, participating countries from around the world uh, some, some access to uh, real-world, uh, research-based, uh, published information. So again, we search for mitochondria on here, uh, this is going to be some of the same things that we just saw in our previous search engine. But again, it asks our students to go into um, looking at some of the data and looking at some of the papers and looking at some of the information uh, that is out here uh, and gives them practice. Uh, in much the same way, science.gov uh, allows uh, us to uh, look at 60 databases and over 2,000 scientific websites uh, to get authoritative information, uh, including research and development results. So science.gov is a great tool. Uh, one of my absolute favorites, though, is um, Wolfram Alpha. Uh, and um, you know, if you want to, if you want to do uh, math teachers, you might not like this, but uh, you know, if you want to ask students to you know solve an equation. You know, this unfortunately allows them to do this, but it also gives them a place to kind of check their answer. You know, so if we type in 2 plus 3x equals 47, um, it actually then will solve that problem uh, and it will graph that, um, it will give us a graph uh, in terms of that um, polynomial, I think. No. Uh, but it'll, it'll give students an opportunity to see, all right, well, here's 47, and where does, you know, if we're at 15 on, you know, uh, if we're at 47 on the y-axis, where is x? And that gives us a visual understanding, gives us, you know, some different pieces uh, that help us in searching. Um, we can, you know, look at, um, in terms of chemistry, uh, you know, we can look up all kinds of information about elements and chemical formulas, uh, and um, uh, we can, you know, take a look at that particular chemical formula, uh, which is benzoic acid. Uh, and so, you know, we can, uh, I was in a science classroom, uh, and we were talking about C6H12O6. Now, I know that that's glucose, but if somebody doesn't know what C6H12O6 is, you know, um, they're going to have to try and, you know, find uh, what, you know, what is this chemical compound. Now, I know it's not, um, it's not coming up as, you know, the way we would expect it. But if we're looking for, okay, we need to find glucose. What error did I make? So I need to find out what, glu what glucose is. Okay, well, it is C6H12O6. I typed it in wrong. Uh, but it gives us some of that information, um, you know, and so we're trying to um, look up that in terms of science and chemistry, uh, and we can get that information. Um, what, did, oh, what else can we do under Wolfram Alpha that I want to point out? You know, if we are going to look up uh, money and finance, uh, and we are going to look up, you know, stock data or futures contracts or uh, and mortgages and loans and you know there's all kinds of different things that we can do in Wolfram Alpha and it just keeps going on. The, the, the clickability of this site is wonderful and it will dive you into all kinds of information. I'm a big fan of Wolfram Alpha for use in our classrooms. RefSeq uh, is, uh, is a, uh, an engine that allows uh, 
things uh, that are out there in the public uh, to get academic information again, much like what we've looked at before. Uh, it's a, a beta search engine right now, uh, but it looks at over a billion documents like web pages, books, encyclopedias, journals, newspapers, and it's not, there's not a paid advertisement piece that's on the backside here uh, that makes Google a little bit more difficult. So RefSeq is a great tool for us to look at. Many of you have used ERIC, uh, the educational resources that are on there. Um, there is, uh, you can select peer reviewed only or full text available on ERIC. Much of this information uh, is available on our library website, and uh, it also gives us an opportunity, again, to encourage students to search academic sources uh, and search academic resources uh, to make them more appropriate. Uh, one of the great ones from um, a school librarian uh, who is still putting this together uh, all the time uh, is uh, the virtual LRC. Uh, virtual learning resources center .com. Uh, and this is uh, a you know a wonderful tool that allows again appropriate content to be searched uh, so if we're looking up again mitochondria in our search there's going to be ads on this one people do pay to be here but we can work our way through that uh, and then this is going to show a number of different sort of general website information that's out there. ScienceNews.org, Wiktionary.org. Uh, what I do like about this is they'll also link to um, different videos to learn about mitochondria. Um, it's a little bit more along the lines of a middle school research engine, but it's a good source for us to use. Uh, from a college level, uh, the uh, you can use uh, what is called uh, BASE, uh, Bielefeld, Bielefeld Academic Search Engine. Uh, there's the basic search, there's advanced search, uh, just like the tools we've seen before. Uh, but this is a crowdsourced uh, search engine out of Europe, uh, and uh, it's a great place for us to do some of our work. Uh, this is, again, a little bit more for kids. Um, Infotopia, which is from the same folks that put together uh, the virtual LRC, uh, but it gives us an opportunity. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to kind of uh, do a little search, uh, again, on some more um, basic pieces. You'll see here, this will link to a Khan Academy piece on mitochondria and chloroplasts. Uh, and so they can you know, use this to learn on Khan Academy about mitochondria and chloroplasts, but this will, will give us some more uh, curated information and searches uh, for our students. Uh, this is a resource uh, from the U.S. National Library of Medicine, the National Institutes of Health. Uh, this is PubMed. Uh, PubMed is great for um, any of the health sciences or science research that we need to be doing. Uh, and then probably one of the most uh, well-known search engines, LexisNexis, uh, has also put together LexisWeb, uh, which uh, looks at just legal content. Uh, and so if we're doing a, a search on um, uh, U.S. versus Lopez, which how to deal with um, uh, Gun-Free School Zones Act and the Commerce Clause, uh, you're going to find very, very specific legal information uh, about uh, those things that are associated with the United States versus Lopez. So there are lots of search engines, uh, and um, we just went through a number of them. None of them Google.com, uh, and none of them are uh, you know Bing.com or any of those just basic internet search engines. We hopefully have allowed students to see a little bit more of an academic approach to searching. I hope that these resources have been a little bit helpful for you and uh, give you a chance to explore maybe one or two of them with your students. Uh, and uh, I hope that they've uh, taken this idea of online research and helped you understand that uh, there are ways to make it more academic and not just necessarily search terms, uh, but actually going to different search engines uh, because that world of academic writing, reading, and publishing is, uh, is not going to be uh, something they will see only once. They're going to have to get used to this, and, and why not give them and equip them with tools now 
uh, to get used to that. Uh, and, and hopefully then, uh, when using these tools, you give students an opportunity to um, use uh, the research that's already been, uh, been written uh, and the parts that have already been published uh, for use in your classroom. Uh, hopefully they're not hindrances to your classroom because they're not going away uh, and we can't avoid them anymore so we have to figure out how we can use them uh, and I hope that uh, being able to see what's out there uh, and adapt with those pieces uh, creates a positive relationship with you and your students rather than an adversarial one that creates this you know us versus them technology is 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 not good for learning uh, because those dates are gone uh, and technology is a tool to help us get to deeper learning. We just have to figure out how to help students facilitate that learning now. So good luck and uh, let's get ourselves ready uh, for um, more of these opportunities and we'll look to see each other next Tuesday with another Tech Tuesday. That's it for now. We'll talk to you later.